Now, if you've been on Instagram long enough, I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of people on Instagram posting with your fancy cars, their nice houses, expensive clothes, you know, to get your flex on. But that's not what we're talking about here. The goal of financial freedom isn't to get those things. The goal of financial freedom is the freedom to choose. So you can choose to go on that vacation, or if you actually feel like flexing, well, I guess you could do that too, but that's up to you. Nevertheless, regardless of your reasons for financial freedom, here are five goals for you to set for the next five years. And before you click off, don't for a second think that this doesn't apply to you if you're not in your 30s or your 20s. You can get started on this regardless of what age you are. You can be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or even 50s, and you can definitely get started on this. There's no better time to start than the present. So with that said, let's get right into it. The first goal is to look to work a job that you love. Now, if you're in your 20s and older, chances are you probably have some sort of nine to five job or a day job that you work in order to put food on the table or a roof over your head and generally just to fund your lifestyle. Yeah, I get it. Sometimes you have to wake up and make a commute and work can be a little bit stressful due to the demands of the job or the occasional drama, but that's the nature of work. It's not always smooth sailing and that it's why it's called work. And besides what you might see on social media and all these entrepreneurs might tell you, your nine to five will most likely be your main source of income until it isn't. So until then, you need to make sure that you're working a job that you love. And if you're in a situation where you aren't working a job that you love, make sure that you really, really take a look at what you need to do to get to a point where you are working a job that you love. And that begins with identifying what is preventing you from getting to that point. Maybe there's someone at work that gives you a hard time and just irks you, or maybe it has something to do with the hours that you're working, or maybe you feel like you're doing the workload of two people, or you feel underpaid. Whatever the reason, the first thing you need to do is write it down. Go ahead and write down what it is about that job that's unpleasant. And now that you have that problem out of here and down here, congratulations. You've openly acknowledged the issue, and you might think that this isn't a big deal, but it's a huge step towards dealing with the issue. Now, secondly, you need to write down what you feel is the best way to solve this. Sometimes this might include having a talk with your manager or looking to move to a different team or moving to a different company. But keep in mind that moving to a different company will not automatically solve all your problems because as they say, the grass is not always greener on the other side. So really put some thought into this. Now, after you've decided on the best way to solve this, write down the first step that you're gonna to take towards this. For example, if you wanna to talk to a manager, you might wanna put a meeting in your calendar for a one-on-one -on -one and think of how you would present the conversation. Or if you're looking towards another team, your first step might be to update your resume. Now, whatever it is, make sure you have that decided and then do it the first thing tomorrow. Again, you've already done some time thinking in a previous step, so now is the time to take some action and make the move that will work best for you. After all, your job is what you'll be literally spending one third of your day doing anyway, so make sure it's the right one for you. Next, let's talk about having an emergency fund. Now, this is extremely, extremely important. I can't stress enough how important this is. Really, now if you wanna take away one thing from this video, this will probably be the one. Now, for those not familiar, an emergency fund is money set aside to be used in case of an emergency, like the in case of emergency break glass type of situation. Would you break glass if there was no emergency? Exactly. And we're talking about actual emergencies here, not last minute gifts or vacations. An emergency, like you get laid off all of a sudden or if you have an unplanned medical bill or something like that. Now this fund is three to six months worth of expenses, which gives you the opportunity, if you get laid off, to still pay for your core expenses while you search for another job. Now, before you go, oh man, I don't think I can save up that much. Well, let's be realistic about it. The same way that you can't lose belly fat in one week is the same way that you can't save that much in a short period of time. Now, it will definitely take time, but you won't get there without putting in a consistent effort. So let's get started. Now, the most important thing is to save the money in an account that you don't access regularly. The best thing to do here is to open a brand new high interest rate savings account. What is that you might ask? A high interest savings account is an account that gives you high interest. A lot of financial institutions allow online only account openings, and this makes it easy to get started. You think I'm kidding? Google free high interest savings account and see exactly what those results are. I'll also include some additional links below that will be helpful to get you started. Now, once you've opened that high interest savings account, go ahead and deposit any amount you can afford to, and I mean anything. If you see it, deposit it. Got cash as a birthday or Christmas gift? Deposit it. Found some spare cash in your clothes? Deposit it. A friend owed you money and hasn't paid you back? 
by the way, if you have that one friend that keeps chasing you down for money, let's hear about it and how long you had to chase them before they actually paid you back. If your friend pays you back, deposit it. Basically, if you see it, deposit it. But it's not enough to go by if you see it, deposit it. The next level to this is actually planning amounts that you will deposit regularly in your savings account. It can be any amount. But the key thing here is to be consistent with that amount and the frequency of your deposit into your savings account. This is the secret to building up your emergency fund. Now, let me ask you a question. What comes first, assets or wealth? Well, what if I told you that they both feed off each other? And that is assets grow wealth and wealth grows with assets. So you don't necessarily need wealth to build assets, but assets most definitely will build wealth. A common thing that people think about the word assets is they think that it only involves real estate. But now that's not the only asset. An asset is pretty much anything that appreciates in value with time. And by that metric, there is one other asset that's low cost and anyone can get started purchasing with as little money as possible. And we're not talking about crypto here. We're talking about stocks and ETFs. Now the advantage of stocks and ETFs is that they are very liquid, meaning that you don't need to wait for a holding period to buy or sell. And there are no closing costs associated with stocks and ETFs as opposed to real estate, for example. So how can one get started with buying stocks and ETFs if you've never done so before? Well, there are many brokers that offer the chance to start trading right away, and some even offer commission-free trading like Wealthsimple. Wealthsimple offers you two free stocks if you use my link below. You can get a stock like Tesla or Google, for example. So sign up below and get you two free stocks when you sign up using my link below. And this offer is only open for Canadians, so sorry to my American peeps, but I'm sure there are American brokers with similar promotions that you can take advantage of. Now, if your only source of income is your job, then you're financially vulnerable than someone who has two jobs, for example. Now, you've probably heard of the story of the table with multiple legs versus the table with one leg. The table represents you, and each leg is an income stream. Now, a one-legged table will still stand, but if you cut off the one leg, it topples over. A table with four or more legs, for example, might wobble if you cut one of those legs off, but it won't topple over. Now, what's the lesson here? The lesson here is you don't want to have only one income stream because God forbid if something happens, then that will leave you in a tough situation, especially if you have dependents or if you're in the middle of building your emergency fund and don't have the funds to cover your expenses. The more money you're able to contribute towards these goals, the faster you'll be able to reach them. It's simple math, right? Typically, the best way to start with generating additional income streams is to freelance, you can be an Uber driver, or you can buy and flip electronics or join an Amazon delivery program. An additional income stream helps you reach your financial goals faster, whether that be building up your emergency fund, paying down debt, or saving up for a purchase. So get out there and see what additional income streams you can start today. Now, if you have any debt, now is a good time to consider paying it down. The thing about debt is that if you aren't careful, it can set you back financially for years or even decades. You might be paying minimum payments on a credit card, but if you lose the ability to keep up with payments or lose your job, that could snowball out of control fairly quickly. The only sort of debt that's practical to hold is either a mortgage or any low interest debt. But in most cases, it's usually your mortgage. Credit card debt with interest rates at 20% is ridiculous and should be eliminated as soon as possible. So if you have any high interest debt, work on tackling the high interest debt first and then move down until you're debt free. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something that you can apply to your situation. If you found this video helpful, be sure to drop that like down below and share with a friend. It really helps to get the word out. Until next time, peace and love. Thanks for watching.